Hello once again, uh, and thank you for giving me such an opportunity to talk. Uh, definitely, uh, every one of you knows that Angular is heavily used on the RxJS library. Uh, so question of unit testing uh, of observables uh, is quite important. And I expect that you already uh, code on Angular and use RxJS and know at least basics, but better intermediate on intermediate level. But even if not, I hope you uh, learn something from my talk. So uh, in this talk, I will review uh, all possible tools for uh, RxJS or observable unit testing. And uh, you can choose which, which tool uh, fits best for your need. Or uh, even if you don't use some tools, uh, you will better understand someone else's code if you have to. So let's go. Yes. Uh, my name is Alexander Poshtarug, and I'm a front-end developer at Node.com. Uh, last four years, I've been working in commercial projects, heavily using our Angular framework and our XGS library. Uh, also, sometimes uh, I do a mentorship on CodeMentor.io as Angular and RxJS Mentor. Uh, uh, wrote a few articles for Angular and Dev blog. Uh, possibly will wrote more. Uh, I'm author of two video courses on Udemy, hands-on RxJS web development and RxJS unit testing in Angular. Uh, time to time, I post some video to uh, Angular Can Waste Your Time, a YouTube video series, and merit father of two playful son, possibly future developers. <laughs> uh, so if you already tried to code uh, unit tests for observables, then you like me <laughs> some time ago, uh, maybe overwhelmed with a variety of method, uh, how you can do that. Uh, and which tool uh, is right for you? Yes, what is common for them and where they differ? And how to put all of them in one solid picture in your head? Uh, this is what I'm gonna uh, bring uh, to you in this talk. I want to make you understand the system. Uh, these are code samples I will uh, write and test for in this talk. Uh, let's review them real quick. Uh, first one is autocomplete suggestion example. Uh, you type text in input element, and after debounce time, this text is sent to the backend. Backend will send you back a list of suggestions to show. Uh, notice that we use debounce time here, operator. So sending to backend will happen after some amount of time. Uh, second example is a simple merge of two observables into result observable. And third example uh, is using repeat when operator to make repetitive, uh, to make a repetitive same network request after specified delay. Delay operator is used here also. Uh, before we start diving into unit testing, we should clarify what are schedulers in RxJS. Uh, you know that observable, uh, observable uh, produces values over time. And the moment when exactly value will be emitted uh, to the subscriber is controlled by a special entity, a scheduler. Knowing how schedulers works uh, is extremely important in understanding how to unit test your async code. Okay, everyone is hearing me well? Just let me know. Yep. Ah, okay, cool. Just... Everything is fine. Okay, okay, just silence disturbs. <laughs> yes, it's hard in a, on a meetup. <laughs> but we are listening okay. all to you. Uh, okay, to understand uh, how schedulers calls, uh, let's recall what is JavaScript event loop in the browser. The main entities on that picture are macro task, micro task, and event loop macro tasks queue. Uh, first, uh, take a look at code to the left, executed code. We have three console log calls here. Uh, first is usual console log call. Uh, second is wrapped in set timeout. And third is called in promise resolve callback. Uh, as you can see in the browser console to the right, yes. Uh, first, unwrapped console log is executed. Uh, then on the second place, we have console log from promise callback. And then on the third place, we have console log from set timeout. 
you may ask why in uh, why it is displayed in such a sequence it is simple uh, first contest so log is executed in current active macro task so it is synchronous yes console log from set timeout will be run in the next macro task so browser put it in a queue and uh, promise callback is scheduled to be run in micro task just after current active macro task so console log three runs before console log two that's why output order is one three and then two so you observe the, the difference uh, when promised resolve callback is called and when set timeout uh, scheduled uh, function is called, yes? Uh, this code uh, on the next slide works in the same way as a code on the previous slide. I use a regjs of function to emit values here. And in some cases, I provide second optional scheduler param. So, First value is emitted synchronously, yes, of one. Uh, second value is scheduled in event loop macro tasks queue. And third one will be emitted in micro task just after current macro task. Providing scheduler to RxJS of function actually does the trick. So code is the same. Yes, it works in the same way, but now we use RxJS entities. Let's take a look at official definition uh, of scheduler from a RxJS GitHub repo. Scheduler is a data structure that controls when emissions are delivered. It means that we can emit data synchronously if we don't use scheduler or use queue scheduler. Uh, we can schedule emission in micro task just after current macro task if we use as soon as possible scheduler, ASAP scheduler. And when we use async scheduler, data will be emitted in other macro task at once or with some specified delay. Actually, animation frame scheduler works in the same way, just the time of emission uh, aligned with read, uh, browser redraw event. Okay. Uh, the main challenges uh, we can make during unit testing of observables are that data are emitted asynchronously, more than one value may be emitted, and order of values may matter. So values are emitted with specified delays, and sometimes uh, in production cases, this delay can be quite big. Yes, for example, it can be seconds or even uh, more than uh, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. 60 seconds if it is some kind of uh, repetitive process. Uh, translating these challenges to the browser event loop terminology, we may say that we should be ready to write unit tests for such cases. For synchronous code, testing, but testing sync code is relatively easy and we will not review it here, yes? Uh, for async code that emits in next micro task, like promises do, for async code that emits in next macro task, which is placed in event loop queue, possibly with some delay, and also combinations of observables, uh, which are frequently used in Angular code. Uh, also, there are two more special schedulers, uh, which were created just for unit testing in RxJS library. First is virtual time scheduler. It allows to execute all delayed scheduled emissions tasks instantly, but keeping the emission order. So if we, for example, want to delay some value in 30 seconds, uh, we may use virtual time scheduler for unit test to flush the emission. Uh, so it happened instantly. And test scheduler is a subclass of virtual time scheduler, but with additional methods uh, for unit testing. We will talk about it uh, also in this talk. One more thing I want you to pay attention to. Uh, RxJS provides scheduler classes, but also you can get existing instances of scheduler classes. So the rule of thumb here is if it is a class, its name starts with capital letter. If it is an instance, then its name starts with, with a small letter. Just pay attention uh, not to be confused, okay? So mostly we will use with instances. 
to find out more on topic of browser event loop uh, and ArcGIS schedulers, take a look at take a look at these perfect videos by Philip Roberts and Michael Hladke. Okay, that's it about schedulers. And now let's start reviewing testing methods for observables. Uh, you know ArcGIS uh, of function, yes? It creates observable uh, that emits values of, uh, or value or a sequence of values. Uh, here in this example, ArcGIS of function works synchronously, just like a loop, emitting all the values in same event loop macro task one by one. So once we subscribe to it, uh, all the values will be produced and we can easily check them in assertion expression. Uh, but things become harder if we need to test async code. Okay, uh, another example. What I changed, uh, I just added async scheduler as the last param. So now all the values will be emitted in different macro tasks. And if we run test below, it will fail. Why? Because at the time we call Jasmine expect function, not all the values are emitted. Uh, so sync testing is not applicable here. Can we somehow test async code? Yes, and nowadays we have uh, a lot of tools for that. Uh, Jasmine framework provides a special done callback for testing async code. How to apply it to observables? Uh, when specific test is executed, Jasmine holds and waits until done callback is called. So if data is provided asynchronously, we subscribe to that uh, observable to fetch the data and run assertion after we got all the data and then run done callback to say Jasmine that we can continue uh, test running. So it is more uh, it is more easier to understand if uh, to take a look on example. If we use done param in test in Jasmine, pay attention it marks with the green line. Uh, Jasmine holds and waits until done call callback is called. So let's use it in our test. Uh, we call our function and subscribe to res uh, result observable. In next handler function, we just add each emitted value to result array. Yes, result push value. And in complete handler, uh, we check the final set of values and call Jasmine done callback. So now test succeeds. One more example, and uh, it is more complicated. So, so here we make HTTP call with this HTTP get, and if it succeeds, uh, it will repeat HTTP calls two more times after specified timeout. So obviously async scheduler is used by ArcGIS delay operator. Uh, for this HTTP get method, I provide the mock that just returns value 42 quite a famous minute of life, yes? <laughs> and then we get, uh, we call get data function with a very small timing, not to wait too long. Uh, we push values to result array in on next handler and in complete handler, we check final result. Uh, and here the drawback of Jasmine done callback is becoming obvious we cannot test code that has some big delays time uh, since, since otherwise test will run for too long. How to omit it? We will see how uh, a bit later. Uh, so let's uh, estimate pros and cons of Jasmine with done callback. So pro, it is a simple uh, and uh, it is good for single values with no delay or with a very small delay. But drawback is it is not visual. We test only final result. And we have to provide uh, small delays 
for testing, not to block Jasmine test run for too long. Uh, as I already said, uh, how to test code that uses big time delays. And for example, if uh, timeout should be hard coded. Uh, it is uh, Jasmine done method is not good for that. And uh, to omit delays, we can use virtual time scheduler. Uh, just to rem uh, remind you, virtual time scheduler allows to flush all scheduled emissions uh, instantly, keeping the emission order. So we can use it for a RegJS code with big emission delays. Uh, pay attention that virtual time scheduler inherits from async scheduler. So we can replace async scheduler instance with virtual time scheduler instance in our test. Uh, in RxJS, if we want to emit values with some specified delays, then async scheduler is used. It can be used uh, in, in implicit way or in explicit way. Yes, for example, delay operator or the bounce time operator uses it in implicit way. Async scheduler uses set interval internally to schedule value emission. Uh, for testing such code, we need to make somehow run scheduled tasks instantly. Uh, but keeping the order of values. So virtual time scheduler can do that. <coughs> it just uh, redefines some methods of uh, async scheduler. Uh, so these values are not actually scheduled with set timeout, but uh, are put to internal queue. If we replace async scheduler with virtual time scheduler in our function, we can achieve uh, the result we need. So here, uh, here are the steps for writing unit tests with virtual time scheduler. We feed virtual time scheduler for our, uh, to our code instead of async scheduler instance. Then we get observable and subscribe to it. After that, we should call a flush method and check the final result. Let's take a look at code. Uh, so here's the example. Uh, and in code here, as you remember, repeat when uh, will rerun source observable two times, except the first run. Pay attention that I've added one more argument to the code, a scheduler, to be able to feed in a virtual time scheduler instance. If we test it with Jasmine down callback method, it will take two seconds until unit test is over. Yes, because pay attention, I feed uh, 30 uh, as a get data param. So it means that uh, it will repeat in 30 seconds. But if we use virtual time scheduler to, uh, uh, to run get data function, then we can get result instantly. Yes. Pay attention that after we subscribe to the result observable, we should call scheduler.flush. Uh, to make uh, this result observable emit all the values. Test passed. So let's sum up. Virtual time scheduler method has such pros. Uh, we can provide real production delay values in our tests. Uh, and we can test even hard coded values since time spans will pass instantly. But drawbacks is that uh, it allows to test only final result, it is not visual, and additional method param is needed, which is actually not very good. Uh, now I want to share one unit testing trick with you. Using extra method argument to provide scheduler instance is not convenient. Uh, we violate code test segregation in that case, since we have to add something in working code just for testing purposes. To avoid this, uh, RxJS version 6 provides a special uh, async scheduler.delegate property. And uh, so if I know that my code uses async scheduler and I want to make RxJS to use another scheduler instance instead, uh, I just have to assign async scheduler.delegate property with that virtual time scheduler instance. And in that case, our test uh, will change a bit 
And the main benefit is uh, that we shouldn't provide uh, our virtual scheduler instance to, uh, when we call our function at all. So to the left, you can see our previous code uh, where we uh, feed in scheduler to the function. And to the right, we reassign async scheduler delegate method, uh, not method, sorry, property. And now we can call our function without that additional argument. Yes, test uh, code is a bit longer, but there is nothing test specific in our working code. Uh, Angular also has another possible way of testing observables that use async scheduler. And for that method, uh, fake async helper function is used. To understand how this method differs from a testing with virtual time scheduler, uh, take a look at the slide. You already know that we can flush all the emitted events with virtual time scheduler. Yes, and I told you how it is done. But there is one more way on another level, I'd, I'd say. Uh, Angular has a specific test helper fake async, which mocks set interval in a browser. So when async scheduler calls set interval, again, we don't get to original set interval queue, yes, but we uh, get our task uh, of scheduled emission to some internal queue. And when we call special function named tick, uh, mocked set interval executes all the scheduled tasks instantly. So we might, uh, might not wait actual time. So the only difference between these two methods is that virtual time scheduler uh, mocks uh, on a RxJS level, yes, on a scheduler level, and fake async uh, mocks set interval on a browser level, on the browser API level. But all the other works actually the same. Uh, how does fake async work? It uses fake async test zone spec uh, zone instead of standard ng zone. And in that zone, standard browser API, like set interval, set timeout, and promise, are patched. When we call tick, uh, tasks from internal queue is executed instantly. Uh, if you are interested to find out more, just take a look at these files in Angular source code, uh, which I uh, provided here for uh, the actual implementation. Okay, time for example. Uh, so here we call get data function without uh, specifying a scheduler. And we provide a quite big delay value. So repeat calls will be scheduled to be done in 30 seconds. This means that in usual time, we would wait for 60 seconds until observable completes. But with tick function, uh, we can run them instantly. Uh, but pay attention that all the test uh, is wrapped uh, with fake async function call. Test, test. Okay, to sum up, uh, fake async has the same pros and cons as virtual time scheduler. We can provide real production delay values. We can test even hard-coded delay values Test becomes a little bit smaller, yes. And one more benefit, you shouldn't know all the RxJS internals to use it, but you should know browser internals. <laughs> and imperfection, it is uh, not visual, yes. It allows only to test uh, final result. Before we start getting deeper in uh, test scheduler usage, uh, we have to understand how test scheduler differs from virtual time scheduler. Test scheduler inherits from virtual time scheduler. So you may guess that we can use test scheduler in the same way as virtual time scheduler instance. And this is right thought. We can take our test with virtual time scheduler and replace its instance with test scheduler instance. But there are some small things you have to know before doing that. Test scheduler and virtual time scheduler has a special max frames param. It determines a time depth for execution scheduled tasks. So if we 
schedule some emission. Uh, if you want to process it, uh, it will not be processed if delay is bigger than max frame. Uh, test scheduler max frame value is set to 750 milliseconds. Uh, this is done as a sanity check for marble testing. Uh, we will talk about marble testing later. In virtual time scheduler, it is set to infinity, so we shouldn't think about that at all. But when we uh, use in test scheduler, we should pay attention to that. So if your code uh, delays are bigger than that value in milliseconds, you should reassign it. Test scheduler also demands assertion expression when you want to create an instance. It makes the scheduler testing framework agnostic, and which is quite good. Uh, for this example, we will review how to use test scheduler instead of virtual time scheduler. Pay attention that uh, we call get data with a 30 seconds argument. Yes, as we usually do, actually. It will take uh, so first, same test code with virtual time scheduler, scheduler and provide mocks. Uh, then uh, we call our function and provide some big delay value for that. Uh, then we subscribe to result observable and call flush method. Virtual time scheduler test will pass but the scheduler code will fail. Why? Uh, remember I told you about max frame value. Actually, it is value in milliseconds to process scheduled tasks with delays not more than this time. To fix our test, let's reassign it. Here it is. And now test is passed. Uh, using test scheduler just like a virtual time scheduler has same imperfection. It is not visual and we can check only final result. But uh, test scheduler is capable uh, to make more, provide more convenience. Uh, and I will do more of it uh, just now. Another testing method, which is more visual and allows to Test in a more obvious way is marble testing. In that method, all observable sequences are represented. Uh, Diagram is a domain that help uh, that helps you visually represent values emitted over time in our test. Here you can see such a diagram of repeat when operator, which is used in, in one of our examples. It looks informative and clear. Uh, in RxJS, test scheduler has a special methods that uh, give us possibility to create tests with marble diagrams. Even more, test scheduler supports two ways to run such tests. So let's review them. Here is our code again. And imagine how, uh, let's imagine how marble diagram for this example may look like. We emit first value, then we have some delay, after that, second value is emitted, delay, third value, and completion event. As you may guess uh, already, one symbol in a diagram represents one time frame. Each frame equals 10 milliseconds. Uh, parentheses here uh, tells uh, us that value emission and completion event happens in the same frame. One more detail to pay attention to. Uh, remember the scheduler max frame limit. Uh, now you can understand what is, it, what is it about. It's like saying, hey, think twice. 750 milliseconds marble is too long. Uh, you may think that here max frame represents number of frames, but no, it is used as a number of milliseconds. Uh, let's review marble testing with test scheduler for our uh, example. Uh, it is being done in four simple steps. We create test scheduler instance and assign to async scheduler delegate. 
second step, we provide mocks uh, created with special test scheduler function. Uh, here it is create called observable. And third, we set assertion expression with actual and expected observable sequences uh, with special uh, expect observable to be constructed. And uh, for uh, fourth step, we call the scheduler flush method. Actually, you already know what flush uh, is doing. Let's take a closer look at some parts of the test. In our code, we create mock for HTTP service call that returns observable. And for marble testing, we use a special function, uh, create called observable for that. As a first param, we feed in marble diagram. In our case, we just emit A and complete observable. But what is A here? Uh, the exact value for A will be taken from mapping object, which is sent as a second param. Uh, Marbles uh, has a special assertion expression, expect observable to be. Expect observable accepts one param. It is observable that we want to test. And to be method, waits for marble diagram of expected output result and respective mapping object with actually emitted values. Pay attention that we have to provide small delay values here. Why? Because default frame length is just 10 milliseconds. Can we increase it? Yes, since each symbol in marble diagram represents one frame, this means that emission of event uh, of value takes your time as well, uh, which is not possible in production. Yes, we emit instantly, uh, but not uh, for a long time. Uh, marble strings uh, uh, use special syntax. And here is a list of possible symbols uh, that you can use. Uh, the mostly used ones are dash. It simulates the passage of time that equals one frame. Uh, letters from A to Z can represent mapped values uh, that should be emitted. Pipe shows when emission is complete. And uh, about others and uh, more, you can read uh, by the link I provided here on official, uh, on official doc. Here you can see some of test scheduler methods which are used for marble unit testing. There are more of them, but these are ones you will be using most of the time, I guess. If you uh, do want to dig deeper, just take, uh, check the link I've provided. Uh, it is the latest marble testing guide from our XGS team. Sometimes even if uh, on a GitHub repo, a path of, the, of that file changes, just search for marble-testing.md file and you will get the latest uh, possible version. Okay. Let's review example where we combine two strings. This is where marble testing actually really shines. Uh, pay attention to mocked observable marble diagram. Uh, when diagram is visual, it is easy to create expected output diagram. Okay, let's run our test and it is passed. Let's wrap up. Uh, Benefits. Now we can make visual test where all emitted values are checked and even uh, a sequence of values, like order of values, sorry. Uh, since we reassigned uh, async scheduler.delegate property, there is no need for additional scheduler in the tested code. Uh, it also has such drawbacks. Uh, delay values are not uh, big uh, here as well. This is because default marble's frame length is 10 milliseconds only. We can increase, of course, but it is not convenient and doesn't allow to emulate exact production behavior. Uh, okay, now we will review Jasmine Marbles library. Actually, uh, just returning to previous method, uh, the main drawback is that we cannot provide big delay values, yes? But before we uh, dig in and I will tell you how to solve that issue, let's review Jasmine Marbles library. Uh, Jasmine Marbles is just a wrapper for RxJS test scheduler to reduce code boilerplate. 
so it provides same functionality but makes tests shorter. You remember our test scheduler example, I guess, yes? Uh, now let's transform it to use Jasmine marbles. Okay, to understand how Jasmine marbles can reduce code boilerplate, let's compare test done uh, with test scheduler and with Jasmine marbles library. In examples with Jasmine marbles, we should not create test scheduler instance by ourselves. Library does that implicitly. But we still can get test scheduler instance with get test scheduler helper function. Also, Jasmine uh, provides shorter helper function names, as you can see. As you can see, we just call uh, call called instead of create called observable. And flush method is called implicitly Jasmine marbles as well. Yes. So as you can see, we don't call flush at all. Here's the comparison table of how helper methods are named in the scheduler and in just in uh, Actually, the same methods under the hood, uh, but just in marbles wraps original the scheduler methods. Makes uh, you've already noticed that Jasmine Marbles calls test scheduler flush implicitly. How is it implemented? Here's a part of Jasmine Marble source code. It, it just defines additional after each handler for that and calls a flush. Uh, Jasmine Marbles has the same benefits and drawbacks as a test scheduler uh, first method, which we reviewed, since it's just a wrapper. But it allows to reduce a bit our test code. And Angular official documentation widely used Jasmine Marbles for test examples, at least previously. Uh, one more thing. Uh, what if in our marble test, we could provide more exact delay values? Like this. This notation is called time progressing syntax and is much more uh, interesting and much more convenient and allows to provide big delay values. So, uh, Let's review how we can test uh, with uh, big delay values. Starting from RxJS version six, new run method was added to test scheduler uh, to test scheduler class, which allows to use time progressive syntax in marble diagrams. So we can sp uh, specify explicitly delay values in a convenient manner. Remember our example, yes? It would be so great to provide such clear timing values in our Mible diagram. And in RxJS version six, we can do that. So let's review uh, the, our example. Uh, the test is created in three simple steps. First, we create test scheduler instance and provide assertion expression. Uh, second step is we call test scheduler run method and provide callback function with our test code. A third step, inside provided callback, we call assertion expression with expect observable helper function. All the helpers are provided to our callback by test scheduler run method. You may ask, what is the difference between old test scheduler way of testing and new test scheduler run method? And here it is. Here is a small comparison of differences uh, that we have for these two methods of testing. The most noticeable distinctions are frame duration is just one millisecond, unlike 10 milliseconds in all test scheduler way of testing. Flush method is called implicitly. Async delegate trick is applied implicitly as well. So we don't have to add scheduler argument for our function. Uh, and of course, time progressive syntax, uh, this super convenient way of specifying delays in marble diagrams. This is a blueprint of the test that used test scheduler run method. Uh, providing assertion expression to test scheduler allows us to use it with any testing framework, not only with Jasmine, but with Jest, Mocker, etc. 
and pay attention also to helper functions. They are provided now with shorter names, very similar to Jasmine Marbles helper. But uh, don't be confused. Just uh, as I will tell you one more time later, Jasmine Marbles wraps old test scheduler test in way, but this is we are reviewing new test scheduler run uh, way of testing. Okay, let's run up the test. So what do you think? Will it pass or not? But it will fail. Why? Because there is one small nuance uh, when we calculate exact values for delays between data emissions. And Kevin kindly provided his tweet where uh, this nuance is explained. Uh, we have to subtract one millisecond for the previous value alphabetic sign and also for the brackets. So expected marble for our example will be a bit different. The difference you can see on the screen. Yes, we for each value like A here, we subtract one millisecond uh, for the subsequent uh, delay value. Okay, now let's try to run our test again. Oh, 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 oh. And it will pass. You may think, hey, if it's so tricky to calculate exact delay values for marble diagrams. So there is a possibility to make it easier. Remember, we provided assertion expression for test scheduler constructor. This assertion function has two params, expected value calculated from expected marble diagram and actual value, which is generated by, uh, by code on the test or observable on the test. If to console log these arguments, we can compare timings of expected and actual emissions. And with this information, it will be easier to understand what is going wrong in our test. Uh, and if you're interested how test scheduler run is implemented, here is a shot of the scheduler source code. You can see that max frames is set to infinity to remove any time limitations for marble testing, because with time progressive syntax, there is no need in sanity checks for duration. Uh, async scheduler delegate trick is applied implicitly and flush method is called in implicit way as well. So the conveniences are under the hood. <laughs> uh, let's sum up. Time scheduler run has many benefits. All tests are visual and we can check every single value. Prod timings can be provided using progressive syntax, uh, time progressive syntax, uh, async scheduler delegate trick is applied implicitly and flush method is also called in implicit way. And it is not tied to any particular testing framework because we provide assertion expression when we create a scheduler instance. Among drawbacks, uh, nuances with timings calculations, which I already told you about. And of course, it demands some learning curve or just one block of mine. <laughs> uh, Test scheduler run method is perfect. But even for this solution, there, there is a wrapping library that allows to improve the developer experience. And it is named RxJS Marbles. You may wonder why one more wrapper library for test scheduler, since we already have Jasmine Marbles. Uh, but as for the moment of this talk, the main imperfection of Jasmine Marbles is that it doesn't support new test scheduler run method. So we cannot use time progressive syntax. While RxJS marbles uh, supports both testing methods with test scheduler flush old way and test scheduler run method. Uh, to be 100% 100, 100 sure, I will check their sources. And as you can see, RxJS marbles uses test scheduler run method under the hood and just scheduler way of testing. Yes, there is no run method there. At least I didn't. Uh, there are even more benefits that RxJS Marbles provides comparing to Jasmine Marbles. In framework agnostic, uh, it provides many examples in it in its GitHub repo, a lot, I'd say, and have a few neat helpers like uh, cases or observe function. I will mention as well. Uh, 
let's review our famous example, just as we usually do. Uh, we use marbles helper function here. Pay attention. And as you may say, hey, it looks very similar to test with test scheduler run method. And you are right. Marbles helper just wraps test scheduler run and creates a scheduler instance under the hood. All the other test code is the same we used for test scheduler run method. Depending on the import path which you use for helpers, RxJS uh, marbles lib will instantiate test scheduler and provide assertion function for the respective testing framework. Also, there are many test examples for each framework as well in GitHub repo. So take a look at them uh, by the link on the slide. Uh, there's also interesting helper function called cases. Uh, if you want to run same test, but with different input params, then cases helper is what you may need for that. Pay attention that it replaces just mean it function totally. So uh, we have case one with specific values. We have case two and not, create, not to create two different tests, we can just use cases and create one test. One more helper function observe, it works in the same way as very first Jasmine done uh, way, which uh, we already reviewed at the beginning. And actually it is a wrapper for it. Observe accepts callback that should return tested observable. And assertion expression should be provided as side effect with RxJS step operator. Like Jasmine done method, it works only with final result uh, after observable completes. In the chat with RFGS Marbles creator, Nicholas, uh, also, he is also uh, from RFGS core team. He told me that he started that library before the scheduler run method was implemented in RFGS 6. And as for today, it uh, far less necessary uh, than it was previously. But as you saw, even uh, it allows you to reduce the boiler code plate, uh, boilerplate code. Uh, time to sum up. RxJS marbles provides the same benefits as the scheduler run, run method. Time progressive syntax, implicit calls of flush and async scheduler delegate uh, assignment. Among drawbacks, you must spend some time to learn it actually. And also it has same time in calculation nuance for marble, marble diagrams that we already reviewed. There is one more uh, scheduler wrapper library, Rx sandbox. I will not review it here, but wanted to mention that maybe you can take a look by yourself. To continue learning observable unit testing, you can use these links. Uh, take a look at official RxJS manual, as well as marble uh, examples in RxJS GitHub repo. Also, uh, Jasmine marbles and RxJS marbles is another good way to write uh, unit tests with less code. I want to say a special thanks to Nicholas from RxJS team, uh, who helped me a lot in understanding RxJS source code and how it works. Uh, also, uh, thanks to Kevin for allowing to use his uh, very nice tweet about Marble's timings nuance. And I'm grateful to uh, in-depth uh, community. It is formerly known as Angular in-depth. I think this talk is not easy one <laughs> to follow. Uh, that's why I have a special gift for you, yes? Uh, because this talk is just a short version of my video course, uh, free video course on Udemy RxJS unit testing in Angular applications. So you can uh, enroll for free and learn even more than I mentioned here and repeat all these uh, materials because uh, RxJS schedulers, RxJS unit testing is not uh, an easy topic. At least it was not easy for me when I learned it. Uh, and thank you for your patience.